Hello students. When we study chemistry, we come across so many formulae. Thus, it becomes very important to understand how to write these chemical formulae and derive the corresponding name of the compound from the same. To write the chemical representation, the first step is knowing the valency. The combining capacity of an atom is known as its valency. The number of bonds that an atom can form as part of a compound is expressed by the valency of the element. With this definition, we are clear that valency is related to the reactivity of an element. Next is, how to calculate valency? Mathematically, we can say that, if the outermost shell of an atom contains four or less than four electrons, then the valency of an element is equal to the number of electrons present in the outermost shell, and if it is greater than 4, then the valency of an element is determined by subtracting the total number of electrons present in outermost shell from 8. Some common valency values are as follows. Sodium Potassium Chlorine Fluorine Iodine Bromine Silver and copper show valency 1. Next are the elements which show valency 2 and they are magnesium, calcium, barium, oxygen, sulfur, zinc, copper and iron. When it comes to valency 3, you must remember 5 elements. Aluminium, nitrogen, phosphorus, boron and iron. Finally, carbon and silicon are for valency 4. By using this table, let us now see a few examples. If aluminium and oxygen are forming a compound, then to write the formula, we must first see their respective valency, which is 3 and 2. On applying the crisscross method, we get the formula of aluminium oxide Al2O3. Likewise, if carbon and oxygen are forming a compound, then carbon valency is 4 and that of oxygen is 2. As their valency is divisible, we will get 2 and 1, respectively. On applying the crisscross method, we get the formula of carbon dioxide, CO2. While writing the name of different chemicals, we also come across many elements which have more than one valency. For example, copper exists in more than one form. How to differentiate it? So let us see the different suffixes which are given for various lower and higher valencies. The first one is us that is used for positive lower valency. For example, Fe for valency 2 is ferrous and for Cu with valency 1 is cuprous. Next, is ic, that is used for positive higher valency. For example, Fe with valency 3 is ferric and copper with valency 2 is cupric. Furthermore, for the negative charged elemental form, we say oxide for O2 minus, sulfide for S2 minus, nitride for N3 minus, phosphide for P3 minus, and carbide for C4 minus along with the presence of nonmetal in the negative form. There is also the presence of different radicals, which are named based on the valency of the central atom. Central atom is the one that is bonded with all other atoms or maximum atoms in the compound. For negative radicals with lower valency of the element, suffixite is used like in sulfite and nitrite. Similarly, with higher valency of element, suffix it is used. For example, sulfate, nitrate, phosphate, and carbonate. Let us see a few examples, including radicals. Aluminium and sulfate have a valency of 3 and 2, respectively. On crisscross, we get the formula of aluminium sulfate, which is Al2SO4 thrice. Similarly, for Mg and carbonate, the valency for both is 2. They are divisible, and thus, 
on the crisscross, the formula obtained is MgCO3. Now, after learning how to write the formula, we should learn how to write the name. For this, first, we should revise the types of compounds. Ionic bonding occurs when there is a large difference in electronegativity between two atoms. This large difference leads to the loss of an electron from the less electronegative atom and the gain of that electron by the more electronegative atom, resulting in two ions. These oppositely charged ions feel an attraction to each other and this electrostatic attraction constitutes an ionic bond. Covalent bonds are characterized by the presence of shared pair of electrons between two atoms. These bonds mostly occur between nonmetals or between two of the same or similar elements. Two atoms with similar electronegativity will not exchange an electron from their outermost shell. The atoms instead share electrons so that their valence electron shell is filled. After revising the types of compounds, let us see how to write the name of different compounds. The first is naming an ionic compound. For naming the ionic compound, the trick is to club the positive part, name with the negative part. For example, let us consider, there is an aluminium and sulphate group in a compound. This implies that the name is aluminium sulphate. Likewise, the next example is a compound that has zinc and chlorine. As you already know, for chlorine, we write chloride. Thus, the name will be zinc chloride. Similarly, we can write sodium oxide for an A2O. Next is the naming of covalent compounds. For naming it, unlike ionic compound, the multiplicity of the participants is mentioned, like that in CO which is carbon monoxide and CO2, which is carbon dioxide. Similarly, for N2O5, it is dinitrogen pentaoxide. Finally, we need to remember the names of commonly used acids. Like HCl hydrochloric acid, HNO3 nitric acid, H2SO4 sulfuric acid, H3PO4 is orthophosphoric acid and H2CO3 is carbonic acid. As we reach the end of the module, let us summarize. First, we revised valency, which is the combining capacity of an atom. This is followed by the method of writing a chemical formula. A chemical formula shows the elements that make up the compound and the number of atoms present in a unit of that compound followed by naming a compound. An ionic compound is named as positive part plus negative part. The covalent compound is named as the first part with its multiplicity, except when it is 1 plus the second part with its multiplicity.